back everybody today we're going over the barrel assembly that you see right here on this rifle it's the fax and firearms dissipator style barrel assembly so a few things there it comes with a uh, retaining handguard cap as well as the delta ring comes with a pinned low profile gas block it is a mid-length barrel however we do have a rifle length sight set up here so that's sort of what makes it a dissipator now for those that don't know uh, years and years ago the military tried to keep the rifle length uh, sight radius but chop down the barrel to 16 inches and uh, what they found is they're having some reliability issues with it even if they opened up the gas port so they sort of kind of gave up on this, on their style of rifle officially but a lot of brands have tried to keep it up over the years uh, Wyndham Weaponry makes it, Colt has made them, Bushmaster has made them um, and now Faxon of course is making the barrel assembly that you see here so why do you want that? Well number one a fixed front sight base that's pinned to your barrel is about as secure as you could possibly get for a front sight. So for duty use, for hard use, um, having it there is kind of second to none in terms of durability. Even if you put some of the really high quality ones on your uh, handguard, like most folks are doing these days, if the handguard shifts, then your zero is gone. With this one, if the handguard shifts, your zero is still there if you're using iron sights, of course. Obviously, we have an optic on this one, but that sort of is the advantage to it. It's absolute durability so um, this one though doesn't have the rifle like gas system so it didn't have doesn't have the cycling problems that some of the earlier ones had like I said it has a pinned mid-length gas block on there and this one here sort of has a medium ish medium to light profile it's one that Faxon came up with on their own but some basic specs on the barrel is that it's a 4150 steel it has the QPQ or nitride finish obviously inside in and out that's going to give you good surface hardness uh, good corrosion resistance and hopefully good accuracy which we'll test here in just a second um, it also has a one and eight twist rate so it should do well with a wide variety of different loads in terms of weight in 556 and 223 but uh, without any more yapping by me we're going to see what kind of accuracy we can get out of this and then come back at the end and let you know what we think of it overall for the accuracy portion basically the setup is this we have a target down range at 100 yards we have a few different loads that we're going to run through the rifle on top of it right now is the uh, Bushnell Elite 1 to 6.5 scope. It's got very good glass and uh, shouldn't hinder us at all here at 100 yards. So the rest is the CTK Precision and uh, the mount there is the Midwest Industries mount. It is just a mil spec trigger on this lower. So if any excuse, that's probably the only one we got, but I don't think we'll need it, uh, hopefully anyway. So without any more yapping, let's start out with the uh, Freedom Munitions 69 grain hollow point boat tail load. This load has been uh, pretty accurate in the past, and uh, for those that don't know, Freedom gives a 5% discount to my viewers here on the channel, anything over on their website. So you see the code there in the bottom of your screen. So, let's see how it does. Next up, we have a light for caliber load. This is the uh, Gorilla Ammunition 55 grain Sierra Blitzkrieg load. Um, this one here has been accurate for years here on the channel. People have seen it do well in barrels of all twist rates. So hopefully we'll be all right here. That last shot I pulled, that one's on me, 100%. All right, last load we have here is the uh, Fioki 77 grain Match King hollow point boat tail, so it's gonna be the heaviest one we run through it today, and uh, we'll see how it does. One thing I'll tell you guys, it's about 105 out here today, and uh, very high humidity levels. More than usual, I can see my heartbeat going in the scope, so it's definitely uh, important to focus on breathing today more than normal anyway. Let's go check it out. First group of course was the Freedom stuff and uh, not too bad but not exactly great there. 
we're right at 1.75 inches on the dot. Then we came down with the Gorilla. I believe that was the shot I threw. Totally user error, I absolutely felt it. With that shot, we're at four inches. Without it, again, we're right at 1.75 inches. Then we came up here with the Fioki 77 grain. Definitely the best group. And we are at one inch. I'm debating, I don't know if it's a quarter or a three eighths, but a little over one inch and a quarter on that group. So uh, no doubt about it, if I had a better trigger and wasn't dying in the sun, we probably could have done better. But even with all that, the rifle still shoots just fine here at 100 yards and uh, not exactly upset about it. I'm not sure how much of the cicadas the microphone's picking up, but out here they are extremely loud. So I apologize if that's uh, distracting there on camera. But uh, we're going to move on after the accuracy that you guys just saw quieting down. And um, accuracy, like I said, you probably could tighten it up if you had a match grade trigger in there, but we got some practical accuracy out here with it today. And the triple digit temperatures that we're sitting in now, just sweating like crazy with a few different loads. So it seemed to do just fine. Like I said, I'm sure you could tighten it up to an inch. I've honestly never had a faction barrel that doesn't shoot MOA or better, and I'm sure this one would do it, especially with the profile of the barrel. So uh, a couple things we can talk about. Number one, of course, is gonna be reliability. I've had a grand total of zero malfunctions at all with this rifle set up here. Um, I should also point out, I have the Faxon flash hider on there. This is the three prong one. It does not come with it, but um, this is the new one. I, for those that haven't seen it, I'm not sure actually if it's up yet, which one's gonna be up first, but I have a video with their pinned uh, three prong barrel. And that one had some pinging. They actually went and re-engineered it. And this one, as you guys can probably tell throughout the video, has almost no pinging at all on it. So good on Faxon for fixing that. And all the other pinned ones are going to be coming with this new design uh, from the factory. So anyway, reliability, good to go. Not a single issue. We are running a aim surplus, one of their bolt carrier groups in there. And again, haven't had a single issue. So can't do any better than that. In terms of price, this barrel here, I looked online today on brown owls and it's going for 312 dollars generally speaking there's some coupon codes at brown owls might be able to get it a little bit cheaper and again that's the whole assembly so you get your low profile gas block pinned with it um and the pin front sight block and the delta ring and the handguard retainer so if you want to run traditional style handguards you can but that is the price point of it it's not terribly high when you look around and see what other dissipator style setups are doing and uh, it's nice that it's giving you the low profile gas block pinned with it i do like that fact um, that's pretty much it guys. If you have any questions about the dissipator style barrel assembly here, by all means post down below in the comment section. You can also post over at my Facebook page as always. I really like it. I like dissipators. I always have. I'm a fan of the front slate block. It just makes me feel good inside. Uh, secure knowing that it's there. Even if everything else goes down, you have a reference point. But that's about it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you guys aren't subscribed yet, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And I hope to see all of you in the next video.